Justine, what's happening to Paul? He was having a bit of a problem back there. We're waiting for him. And... <laughs> Apparently he was having a resort. <laughs> His uh, trousers all got tangled up or something. And, uh... This is, this is <laughs> all being blown out of proportion now. What's a resort, Paul? I'm just tucking my thermals in. <laughs> well, you need a privacy for it, so it must be pretty bad. I was... I was having a pee and I took the opportunity to re-tuck my thermals in, that's all. And now apparently I'm doing something weird. <laughs> got dirty minds, that's all. Yes, you. yes. <laughs> Ray, what is this? Um, well, it's marked on the map as standing stones, and there's a, a line of three of them. There's, well, it looks like a pair here, and I've, I've not noticed that before. And there's two more across that way. They're not in an absolutely straight line. So, without checking the books, I would guess this is Neolithic, the New Stone Age. So, these have been erected four or five thousand years ago. Um, probably there's got to be some ritual purpose but you know there is no tradition so we, we know nothing about the the motivation of the people but they're all across Stone Age Britain so from the Orkney Islands where you've got some spectacular examples of stone circles standing stones 15 feet high uh, and of course uh, down in the south of England you've got Stonehenge which is probably the greatest example of all time so but just looking at this one what's fascinating it looks like it's a pair of stones and one's fallen over but I'm, this is just guesswork on my part kevin i'm not uh, a, a, an expert there's a standing stone behind you and you just wonder are they lining it up with something no idea but uh all across the scottish landscape the england wales they're littered with these things that these people have left behind them and then across this way um, there is what is called a chambered cairn uh, where it, it appears that people wouldn't necessarily be put in there fresh dead they might have let it go down to bones and then stack the bones in there and they're like family tombs but interestingly enough this one is known as Balin's tomb or Balin tomb and anybody's Lord of the Rings <laughs> you see a connection there but uh, Tolkien was taking names from prehistory and uh, legends from elsewhere. So it doesn't surprise me there's a Balin's tomb here. There's a lot of sheep in this country. <laughs> well, there's no sheep here. Well, yes, there was. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh. Oh, wait, wait. oh. Never, you can't walk without stepping in it. Oh, let me do it in the accent. I shite. It's shite. <laughs> it's shite. It's sheep shite. <laughs> Well, I'm still not sure you're taking this whole haggis thing seriously. Have you ever seen a, a wolf take down a bison you know, on those natural history documentaries where they just get hold of the leg and take the animal down even though they're much bigger? It's the same with a haggis taking a person. They just get you by the ankle and another one gets and they just take you down. You don't need to watch out. And the other thing you've got to be worried about is you don't want them up your trouser leg. And we're not really wearing dry size trousers with socks in because of the river is haggis protection but we really didn't want to bother you and if you look at the label on the back of the trousers it does say proof to a certain degree against haggis attack so what's this about so we can power this river but yeah who yeah. owns it um well it's in england and wales it would be very straightforward up here in scotland it, it it's different. What happened uh, uh, a number of years ago, they brought in the, in Scotland, the Countryside Rights of Way Act. And that gives you a right to camp on wild land. It gives you the right to walk anywhere you like in Scotland on wild land, not through cultivated fields. And it gives you the right to navigate any body of water. So in Scotland, the law is, is pretty impressive. dark and it's late and it's cold and we haven't had whiskey yet 
And yet we're in Scotland. <laughs> the Haggises are out. I'm even afraid of them now. I, I actually think they're telling the truth. <laughs> and I gotta pee really bad. <laughs> and I still got my helmet on. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. That was good. I'm glad we know the river. <laughs> yeah. In this light. Who? Woo. There's only so many hours in the day, Kevin Callan. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not very many in November. No. We need to make a fire, drink whiskey, have food, and have a jolly old time in the woods. Excellent. And that's it. I'm happy! I'm happy! <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. What is that? That is a folding buck saw, so it fits into a little sleeve like that down the side of a portage pack, but it's a full size Ooh. saw. Blimey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we got one piece cut. Oh, this is Kevin Callan's version of bushcraft. Kid, I've got birch back there which you can scrape up and <laughs> drop a spark onto. It's just I've got matches and this is quicker, so um, that it would be fine as well with a sparky stick. But, uh, we can go. Maybe, maybe may I show you a different method every time we light the fire. So we've done sparks onto onto lichen. We did sparks onto the coals this morning and blew it into flame. And now we're doing matches onto birch bark. I just want to make sure I've got plenty of the bark going. As you can see it has a tendency to curl in on itself, which is uh, a bit of an issue sometimes, like here. As so you see what happened there, it all just curled in on itself. It's struggling a little bit but it's, it's starting to catch and then we had damp twigs as well so it's all all a little slower than it can be, but it's, uh, it's starting to take. Use those flames to get the next little kindling going. It just needs a little bit more oxygen than it's naturally getting, so I'm lifting up kindling a bit just to allow a bit more air in. You can see the difference that's making to the flame now. I'm getting more heat into the system and that's taking the surface moisture off these damp sticks and even though we've picked them off the trees that have been up off the ground everything's really quite damp in here because of the rain in the past few days. What are we having this evening Paul? Well apart from a wonderful dinner which we're about to prepare we have another Speyside single malt. We have a Glen Livet and the Livet is up in the hills above where we are and it flows down and it goes into a tributary of the Spey and then flows into the Spey not far below where we're camped this evening so it's a fitting one for us to have for this part of the Spey and a jolly good whiskey too. Oh that's a healthy portion isn't it? That'd be mine. Yeah. Blimey, I'm traveling like with Kevin, Kevin for a day or two. I know, I know a Kevin portion when I see it. Ooh. Paul, what are you making us? We're having a lovely pasta with uh, lots of veg. Paul, Kevin, you've now put corn in there. Yeah. So you okay? You got red and green peppers. Yeah. Garlic that actually Justine cut because I can't cut garlic obviously. Mm-hmm. Leave the skin on. Yeah. Uh, onion. Yeah. Um, celery. Celery. Chilies. Chilies. Good slug of olive oil. Yeah. Yeah. That was frozen, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Look. Yeah. Even been by the fire. Yeah, still we had a cloudy. And yum, yum, yum. tuna and tomatoes, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Hope you're hungry, Kevin. Awesome. It's top on the river. There's whiskey to be had. There's good dinner to be had, good company to be had, and yet I still fear the haggis. The haggis. Da, 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 da. You're a bit nuts. Is it official? Can I officially call you nuts?